What is up, Minties? This is the Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, and today, as promised, I'm going to do the part two of my Justice League comprehensive reading order. So, please stay tuned. Okay, now before we get started, I'd like to say a quick word from our sponsor for this segment. This episode is sponsored by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties... Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first-time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout, and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Okay, now let's get this started. Uh, thank you very much to our Patreons, by the way, for voting for this. Um, if you haven't joined our Patreon, please think about doing so, because we have a poll every month to vote what the next reading order that I'll be doing is. Okay, so we're going to start with right after Infinite Crisis, the big crossover that revamped the universe. We kicked it off with Brad Meltzer and Ed Bennis's Justice League of America. Now we're back to calling it Justice League of America. And this is uh, Brad Meltzer, the guy that did Identity Crisis, and Ed Bennis, who was drawing Gail Simone's Birds of Prey at the time. So let's take a look at these books. Okay, so these are available in trade paperback. And for some reason, they never got an omnibus. But I really enjoyed Brad Meltzer's take. As much as I didn't like his identity crisis, I think his Justice League was actually a pretty good throwback to the classic age. So this collects issues 1 through 7 of Justice League of America. And let me just show you some of that Ed Bennis arc. By this time, Green Arrow has given up the mantle of Green Arrow. He's just doing his own thing in his own comic book. And then you have Roy give up the mantle of Arsenal, and he becomes Red Arrow. And then you have Red Tornado back. Most of these covers were done by Michael Turner. As a matter of fact, I think every cover in here is done by Michael, Michael Turner. And okay, Then we have Volume 2, The Lightning Saga. This one here collects issues Justice League of America number zero. So they did not leave that out. And I really enjoyed that issue too. That kind of gets the team back together. Oh, Geoforce. I forgot he was in this. Um, and it contains issues 8 through 12. And then Justice Society of America volume 3. Uh, issues 5 through 6. Now, this has been collected in the third omnibus of the JSA by Jeff Johns, because it is a crossover event. Uh, it has the return of the Legion of Superheroes, among other characters. Uh, and here is yeah, the Monitor Duty issue. Man, this one's so cool. And continuing Brad Meltzer's run. And then, I think after this, he ends up leaving the book. Which takes us to my favorite Justice League story of all time. We've done this on Old Reader, New Reader. And now we have Dwayne McDuffie writing the book. This is the Injustice League. So this would serve as volume three of the reading order after Infinite Crisis. You have Mike McCone on art, Joe Benitez, and Ed Bennis as well. He's on this too. Uh, this collects issues 13 through 16 of Justice League of America and the JLA wedding special. The wedding is because Green Arrow and Black Canary were engaged. Do they get married? I don't know. You should read the book. This is, like I said, is a wonderful, wonderful story. Oh, yeah, and I forgot. The Tangent Universe comes back here. Because this is like a prequel to the Tangent Superman storyline by Joe Benitez. And by now you know I like to sneak in books because people love taking just snapshots of all the books in chronological order. So, yes, this is the next book you should read. This is JLA Salvation Run. This is a really cool event. This collects issues 1 through 7 of this. It is written by Matthew Sturgis and uh, Bill Willingham of Fables and drawn by Sean Chen. It's where all the villains kind of in the way of Planet Hulk get sent off to a different planet. And it's kind of survival of the fittest. But I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was well done. Next up, we have Sanctuary. Now, this one here is written by Dwayne McDuffie, but also has Alan Burnett 
uh, writing some of the stories, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, actually, the Sanctuary story. And you still have artwork by Ed Bennis. And let's just look a little bit through here. Uh, this one collects uh, Justice League of America issues 17 through 21. Oh, Ethan Van Skyver has some artwork in there, too. It's, it's up. I always enjoyed his art. Uh, and then you have the f kind of a prelude or, yeah, lead up to Final Crisis here, the Gathering Crisis. So, yeah, speaking of Final Crisis, of course, now you can start reading Final Crisis to see what happens to some of the characters that are forever changed. Okay, and then you have The Second Coming, written by Dwayne McDuffie. Art by Ed Bennis. Um, man, yeah, by now Ed Bennis's art is just sharp. You know, he used to be this TNA kind of artist when, well, I mean, he, I guess he still kind of was, but I don't know, maybe it was the Inkings. I love this fight with um, the cyborg, what, what is the name? Amaz Amazo. Here's some more of that artwork. Oh, that's Derek Robertson right there. Oh, yeah, this is the different timeline, storyline. This one's really cool. Uh, so, collecting issues of Justice League of America 22 to 26. Like I said, I'm surprised none of this stuff ever made it into an omnibus. That's kind of weak that they never did that. Okay, next up is When Worlds Collide. This is the crossover event with the Milestone Universe, which Dwayne McDuffie was known for creating. Um, the Milestone Universe and characters like Static Shock. But this is that crossover event. You still have Ed Bennis on artwork. Um, collecting issues of Justice League of America 27 through 28. And skipping 29. And then issues 30 through 34. 29 was one of those... Oh, what was it? It was like a villains issue, I want to say. Except it wasn't called villains. It was called something else. Like face, Faces of Evil. That's what it was. Faces of Evil. With Starbreaker starring in it. And then you have Rag Morales on artwork here. Okay, next up is Cry for Justice. This kind of kicks off the James Robinson years, which didn't really last long. And we'll talk about that, but look at this beautiful artwork. Uh, collecting Faces of Evil Prometheus, which is one of my favorite JLA villains of all time. And also collecting Cry for Justice 1 through 7, which is a miniseries that kind of leads into the new Justice League. Um, James Robinson, of course, is known for writing Starman, and there are a lot of things that he did here that a lot of people didn't agree with, or a lot of people had issues with. I'm not going to talk about it, such as, uh, you know, some of the moral issues with one of the heroes, but it's not as bad as, let's say, Identity Crisis. But anyway, um, it also contains the 52, the Origins part, uh, issues 22 and, and 42, which has, like, uh, the Green Arrow and the Atom and things like that. Moving on to the outcome of that, and this is written by J.T. Kroll. This is the Rise and Fall uh, hardcover. Both of these are available in trade paperback, by the way. Um, this one collects the Rise and Fall special, the Justice League Rise and Fall special, uh, Rise and Fall of Arsenal issues 1 through 4, and then uh, issues 31 and 32 of Green Arrow, as well as the Justice League 43 issue, which is also collected in the next trade I'm going to talk about. Now we have the new team of Justice League right here. This is a Mark Bagley cover, and you have James Robinson on writing duties. He is writing this full time. So this collects Justice League of America 38 through 43. It's the brand new Justice League after all the stuff that happened in Cry for Justice and Rise and Fall of Arsenal. Uh, if you've been keeping track, that means that issues 35, 36, and 37 have not been collected. And you're right. That was the one with, I want to say, the Royal Flush Gang storyline. Now we have uh, a Starman. Uh, you know, some of his favorite characters, Donna Troy. Now, this team, sadly, does not last very long because something else is about to happen. Okay, then we have Dark Things. This is the crossover event with the Justice Society of America. It is all written by James Robinson and art by Mark Bagley for the most part. Collecting issues of Justice League of America 44 through 48 and Justice Society of America 41 and 42. 
It's just another crossover event with that. So two things. Number one, this is embarrassing. Apparently, I had let my brother borrow my Justice League books, and he still has my Justice League Omega book. So if you're keeping track, Justice League Omega happens right before the rise of Eclipso. And that Justice League Omega, which is right here, contains issues 49 through 53. Also by James Robinson and Mark Bagley. And then that takes us to this. This is the Rise of Eclipso. This is the final trade paperback. Um, everything, by the way, up until now has been available in trade paperback and in hardcover. This book right here, they just threw us a bone because they, were, they weren't they were even going to release this. This is the Rise of Eclipso, only available in trade paperback. And this finishes out James Robinson's run. Uh, this collects issues 54 through 60 of Justice League of America and issue 43 of Justice Society of America. I can't believe my brother still has my Omega. Who keeps the James Robinson run of Justice League anyway? And then this little event happens. This is Flashpoint, where the world is about to change forever. Available in an absolute edition, available in trade paperback, and this little standard size hardcover. Hopefully we'll get an omnibus sometime. This is where the world is going to change forever because it's a crisis event right after this the dc universe again revamps and we get the dc new 52 universe this uh by the way has also been collected at least the jim lee run in an absolute format and there's also a dark side omnibus but that's it so the whole universe has been revamped this is probably a hard reboot more than some of the other Crisis, like Zero Hour, uh, even Infinite Crisis. This is more like the character of Superman was forever, well, forever, uh, was changed during this run. It wasn't our Superman. Batman was sort of the same, but everybody else was beating for the first time, and that happens here in Justice League Origins. Collecting issues one through six of this run. By now, Jeff Johns has taken the mantle of writer, and of course you have the beautiful artwork by Jim Lee. Then we have Volume 2. This is Villain's Journey. All these, again, like I said, collected in trade paperback. Um, this is the standard size hardcovers. And also in that Absolute Edition. This collects issues 7 through 12 of the Justice League by Jeff Johns. And Jim Lee finishes out his arc as the artist. He doesn't draw everything in here. But, yeah, man, that dude... Still got it after all these years. And of course, after 12 issues, we have to have our mandatory first crossover event. This is Throne of Atlantis, collecting Justice League issues 13 through 17, and Aquaman 15 through 16. Also collected in the Aquaman Omnibus uh, by Jeff Johns and the Aquaman trade paperbacks. I think I believe it was volume 3 that collects this crossover. Which leads into what I like to call Justice League 3.5 because this collects issue 0 and it also collects issue 21 of Justice League. Uh, this is the coming of Captain Marvel or Shazam. It's the story, pretty much what the movie is based on. If you've seen the movie Shazam, it's practically that story in here by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. These were told through the pages of Justice League like the uh, the backup pages, so it collects, like I said, issues 0 and 21, and then the backup stories from 7 through 11, 14 through 16, and 18 through 20. Now we have The Grid. Uh, we have a new penciler. This is Ivan Reyes now. Um, he's the one that penciled some of the Throne of Atlantis, the Aquaman's parts, and now he's moved on over to Justice League. So, collecting issues 18 through 20. 21 was in that Shazam cover, or Shazam trade paperback. And issues 22 to 23. After the grid, uh, we have this. I think I like to call this volume 4.5. This is the Trinity War, uh, which spins off into another Justice League series, but we're talking about the main one here. Uh, so what this contains is Free Comic Book Day 2012, uh, Trinity of Sin, Pandora 1 through 3, which has been kind of set up through some of the little 
cameos by Zealot in those issues of Justice League by Jeff Johns. Uh, Phantom Stranger 11. And let's see what else we have. Justice League 22 to 23, uh, which was already collected previously. Uh, Justice League Dark 22 to 23. And Justice League of America 6 through 7 and Constantine 5. So at this time, there is a Justice League Dark and there's a Justice League of America. But I want to just focus on the main Justice League book. Otherwise, these things get really confusing. Next up in our read is Forever Evil. This is the crossover and I think a really mandatory event. Because a lot of things were going on during this time. During the... Uh, ongoing series of Justice League, so I think it's very important to read this. This collects the miniseries issues 1 through 7 of uh, Forever Evil. And you have beautiful artwork by David Finch. Now, these poses may look familiar because that's a throwback to the first volume, uh, but this is volume 5, and this is Forever Heroes, collecting issues 24 through 29 of Justice League. Ivan Reyes is still on artwork, and you still have kind of the aftermath of the Injustice League. They are still in here. Or, I'm sorry, the Crime Syndicate. Which, if you remember part one, I told you all they would play a bigger role later on. Well, they did. And here's all the variant covers here in the back. Forgot they were doing Scribble Knots and Robot Chicken covers. Taking us to Volume 6, Injustice League. We've seen that name before. So it is a very popular name, and I'm sure these aren't the only two times that you have seen that name probably for a justice league story collecting issues 30 through 39 of justice league you still have ivan reyes on artwork for the main part but then doug Mankey comes in and helps as well as jason fabuk okay now we begin the last leg of the new 52 universe and jeff john's run with the dark side war this by the way has been collected in an omnibus all these books that i'm about to show uh, so this is part one of the Dark Side War. This collects issues 40 through 44 of Justice League. And you also get a sneak peek of the Divergence series in here. And in between books one and two, I like to put Power of the Gods in here. Uh, this collects issues of the Dark Side War. Batman, they're all one shots, by the way. Green Lantern, Lex Luthor, Flash, Superman, and... Shazam. They're all collected in here. They're all little one shots. Which takes us to the final volume of the New 52. Well, sort of. Uh, this is Justice League Dark Side War 2, Part 2. Again, collected in an omnibus. By now, Jason Fabuk is the main artist on the book. And this collects issues 45 through 50 and Justice League Dark Side War Issue 1. Now, if you know much about the New 52, you knew there were 52 issues collected or originally in all these before they ended. I'm sure they totally did that on purpose. Um, so 51 and 52 are missing from this, but not really. I'll show you where to read 52 here in a second after we talk about this. This, of course, being Rebirth. Now we need another rehaul. We need another reboot, and that's where this comes in. This collects the one-shot. This is the hardcover, also available in trade paperback. There's a ridiculous omnibus if you want to get all the number one issues, but I strongly uh, oppose that. But yes, this is the next reading order is Rebirth. Here is Action Comics Deluxe Edition number one. Why am I showing you this? Well, because for some reason... No, it's not for some reason. They knew what they were doing. Uh, the final issue of the New 52 Justice League is collected in here. The Dan Jurgens issue with Tom Grumman on artwork. So issue 52 of Justice League from the New 52 is collected in here. And then you read Action Comics. But I wanted to talk about Rebirth first. Because really the 52nd issue could be read right after Rebirth 1. So, speaking of Rebirth, let's finish this out with DC Rebirth editions. Here is Justice League Rebirth. These are all available in trade paperback, by the way. Uh, you have Brian Hitch writing the story now, which, uh, no thank you. These are pretty bad. <laughs> I don't know if y'all have read these. 
But you also have Tony Daniels on artwork, which I really enjoy, so I, that's why I get the oversized hardcover. This collects issues 1 through 11 of Justice League. Taking us to volume 2 of the Deluxe Edition, and collecting issues 12 through 25. Uh, Brian Hitch is now drawing some of this stuff, and it, even though it's a little bit better than the f previous volume, it's still some pretty craptacular Justice League stories. I just happen to be a completist. Which takes us to volume three. That's right, Brian Hitch's name is still there because he's still writing the book, but this is his final issue. Um, now you have Fernando Passarin drawing the artwork of Justice League. This is a time, it's like a future story, which actually, this one wasn't as terrible. He kind of ends on a high note for him, but it just, it's subpar compared to other stories. Not as bad as Chuck Austin's Pain of the God, but it's still pretty bad. Oh yeah, I forgot, Robert Vendetti has a issue in here too, with artwork by Liam Sharp. Which takes us to Justice League. Uh, this is another deluxe edition, but however, we're not calling it the Rebirth anymore. We're calling it the Christopher Priest Deluxe Edition. This finishes out Justice League. Uh, so you have Christopher Priest writing the book, and you have Pete Woods drawing it with Ian Churchill jumping in from time to time. Now, there, uh, this is the final deluxe edition, and like I said, it's all in trade paperbacks as well. After this, you have Scott Snyder's, uh, what is it called? No Justice little miniseries, one through four, which is kind of the aftermath of the DC Metals storyline. And we don't have an oversized hardcover of that, but Scott Snyder did promise us an omnibus of DC's metal, dark metal, so who knows where that is. But that's it as far as the deluxe hardcovers and trade paperbacks that are collected of the Rebirth run. There is one solicited, a deluxe edition, which I cannot wait to get. I hope they don't cancel it. And that is in 2019 in December. It's Justice League by Scott Snyder, book one. And that collects issues one through 12. So we still have that to look forward to. And that was everything. Let me know in the comments down below if I left anything out. Remember, this is just the main Justice League title, not spin-off titles such as Justice League Dark or Justice League of America during the Rebirth years. Well, everything except for that Omega book that my brother still has. Again, thank you very much to our Patreons for voting on this. The new comprehensive reading poll will be up next week. And if you haven't joined our Patreon, please think about doing so. If you enjoy these type of videos and haven't subscribed yet, please think about subscribing and hit that like button and notifications button if you have subscribed. We can also be found on Redbubble where you can buy our logo on t-shirts and stickers and whatever you want. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Near Mint Con. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be Near Mint.